Picture this, a world where wings aren't just for birds, where you can make those wings for yourself without wasting any time. Buggle up and let's get started. After you have imported the footage into After Effects, we will track it. But before that, we will mask out our subject. This doesn't need to be perfect. We just don't want this to interfere with the tracker. Change this to none and enable the keyframes for this. And do this for all of the video. And now let's do the same for the shadow. Remove it as well. Once you have done that, duplicate your layer and delete the masks. And go to the point in the video where you want the wings to come out from. Control Shift D on your keyboard to split it and delete the first part. And now we will rotate this footage. Also, this doesn't need to be perfect. We just want this to cast shadows on our wings in Blender. So once you're done with that, click on freeze and export it out with the alpha. Once this is done, click on your footage and turn the masks to subtract and then pre-compose your footage. And now we will track our footage. If you don't see the tracker option right here, go to window and tracker, turn it on and you will see it right here. Now click on track camera, advance and turn on detail analysis. You can make the points bigger or smaller with this option. Now I will go back to the pre comp layer and change the mask to none again. Now I will make a reference point right here should be fine. Select it, right click and set ground plane and origin. Right click again, create solid and camera. Now to export this camera into Blender, we will need an add-on called AE to Blend. Once you have downloaded and installed the add-on, go back to After Effects, select the position, shift select the orientation of the camera, Control C on your keyboard to copy it. Now open up Blender and you will see an option right here to create a camera. Sometimes the camera is imported correctly and sometimes it's not. So if it's not, let's change this to 20,000 or something. Go into the camera view and select the camera. Go to the camera settings and also change this to 2,000 or 200,000, something like that. Now go back to After Effects, select your track solid. Select all of these settings and Ctrl C on your keyboard to copy it. Go back to Blender and select Create Plane. Now we will create a cube for size reference. As you can see, the cube is very small and the plane is very big. So create an empty, scale it up, select your camera transform and plane transform and shift select your empty and then control P on your keyboard to parent it to it. So now scale down the empty and match it with the cube. This will normalize our camera track. Now, if we change this back to 1000, everything will look fine. Now let's bring in our background footage, select your camera, go to camera settings and enable background images. Select add image, change it to movie clip and select your footage. If your video was shot in vertical mode, I don't know why it happens but Blender doesn't recognize vertical footage. So what you have to do is go into After Effects and export your footage. And then if you add it again, it will work fine. Also make sure to change the resolution to your footage. Now select the camera transform and select all the keyframes and move them forward by one frame. This is because Blender starts from frame 0 and After Effects starts from frame 1. Now as you can see the plane is not in the right place. In After Effects we placed it on our right foot and this is way in the background. So how do we fix that? Go into After Effects, double click your 3D camera and copy the focal length from there. Go back into Blender and paste it in the focal length there. Now you would think that it will work but no. If you have shot your video in vertical mode this won't work. You have to divide your focal length by this number. I will leave it down in the description below so you don't have to remember it and everything should be working fine. Also make sure to change the FPS. I have changed it to 60 because my footage was recorded in 60 FPS. And now we will bring our roto layer into Blender. So shift A on your keyboard, import images as planes, select your roto wing layer. For this next part you will need the copy attributes add-on which comes with Blender. So select your roto layer, shift select the camera, control C on your keyboard, copy location and then copy rotation. Now select your roto layer, go into edit mode, then G on your keyboard and then Z, Z to move it backwards along its normal. Now go into your camera view, go back into edit mode and G, Z, Z and move it back until it matches your camera frame perfectly. Subscribe and I will give you a chocolate. It's empty. 
go back to object mode select your roto layer shift select your camera control p on your keyboard and then parent it to it now if you scale your footage up and down it would look the same from your camera view i'll show you what's the point of this but before that i will change the frame so it matches with orig original video open up your shader editor go into the camera view and change the start frame until it matches with the original layer and now if you play this video our roto layer will be perfectly aligned with our footage if i scale this plane up with this you can have perfect and realistic shadows on the ground as well go into your camera view go into render mode and scale the footage until the front of your footage just barely touches the ground this will normalize your footage and it will be correctly placed in the 3d world now we will download a 3d character from Mixamo. once you've downloaded your character import it into blender and scale it up and place it in the right position now select the armature go into pose mode and now we will make it follow our movement we don't need to be perfect about this we just need to worry about the shoulder bones i will make it so that the shoulder bones are always on the tracker which i placed on my back and now i will bring in the wings i created in the previous video now if you don't know how to make these wings my phone fell off now if you don't know how to make these wings you can go to my patreon page and download it from there or you can go and watch my previous video where i show you how to create these wings step by step now let's place the wings on our back after you have placed your wings correctly we need to remove the parent from it so select your wing right click go to parent clear and keep transformation do the same for the other wing now create a new empty and bring it to where the right shoulder is shift d to duplicate it and place it on the left shoulder Now select the right empty, shift select the armature and go into pose mode. Select the shoulder bone and then control P on your keyboard and parent it to the bone. Do the same for the other empty. Select your left wing armature and shift select the left empty, control P on your keyboard to parent this. Do the same for the right wing. Now the empties should be following the bones and the wings should be following the empties. Now go to the frame where the wings will be fully grown. Shift select both of the wings, go into pose mode and pose them as you like it. For me this is how I want it to look when the wings come out. Also enable auto keyframing right here. Now select both of the armatures, press I on your keyboard and add a keyframe for location, rotation and scale. Go back to the frame where the wings will start to come out and on that frame scale the armature down and bring it inside the body. And now if you play it back, it will look like that the wings are coming out of the back. Adjust the keyframes to your liking. You can use my video as reference as well if you don't know how to animate. And now I will animate the wings with the body. Now if I go into render mode and see how it will look. As you can see my video is casting shadows on the wings which will look very good you can place the sun as you want but in my opinion if you use a gri that would be better now to create the cloth simulation we will use the shirt that is provided with the maximum character now let's create a material for it so open up the uv editor and open up the shader editor and in photoshop i imported this image and removed the track markers and then I can click and drag this image into the shader editor and we will connect this to the base color. Everything is off. In the UV editor, let's select this image, wings key. Let's go into the camera view. Go back into edit mode, select everything. U on your keyboard and then select project from view. Press O on your keyboard to turn on proportional editing and place this right here turn up the roughness so that it's not as shiny this should be fine now let's create new shape keys for the shirt 
So go to the point where the wings are barely out of the shirt and using proportional editing make them bulge a little bit. The idea is that you make it look like something is coming out of the shirt. Now keyframe this. Once the wings come out, change the value to 1. While you have selected the shirt, press M on your keyboard and create a new collection for the cloth. Select your shirt, go into edit mode, select the area where the simulation will be. Once you've selected the area, shift D on your keyboard to duplicate it, then P on your keyboard and separate this by selection. And then remove the shape keys from the duplicated shirt. Delete the basis first and then the keyframe. Let's hide our full shirt. Select the duplicated shirt. Go into edit mode, edge select and then K on your keyboard to bring up the knife. And let's draw some cuts. Once you are done with that, press enter and select all of the edges which are not selected. Right click on your mouse and mark sharp. Now that you've created some new faces, they are poking out because they are not following the spine. Select your faces which are poking out and assign them to the vertex group for the spine. Marking sharp means that you are splitting the mesh in half. Now let's create a pin group for the simulation. Select the edges of the shirt and then assign them to the vertex group you just created. Go to the modifier step and then add an edge split modifier and apply it as well. Now let's go to the physics properties and add a cloth simulation. Go into cache and I will change the keyframes. So I want the simulation to start from 247 and end it on 516. Go into shape and select your vertex group you created for the pin. And now select your wing arms and turn on collisions for both of them. Select your shirt, go back into the physics properties, turn on self collisions and change the distance to zero. I don't want this shirt to split up so much so I will go back and remove some of the edge splits that I added. You can just right click and clear sharp. Once you are happy with the simulation, you can go into cache and bake it. Now make sure that your wings are not poking into the shirt. So now we want to switch between the two shirts. Select your first shirt. Go to object data properties. Go to visibility. Uncheck viewport and renders. Turn on the keyframes. Go a single frame back. Check viewports and renders. Make sure auto keying is on so it will automatically create a key for it as well. Now select the second shirt. Go to where the simulation will begin. Add a keyframe, go back one frame and turn off viewports and renders. So now we are telling Blender that on frame 246 we want the first shirt and 247 we want the second shirt. Now for the render settings, if you want the shadow on the ground, select your plane, go to object data properties, under visibility, make it shadow catcher. Now go to the render properties and under film, turn on transparent. Now select your roto layer, go into object data properties and under ray visibility turn it off for the camera. And now it will only cast shadows. Go up here and click on this icon to turn on the holdout option for the collections. And turn it on for the cloth. Set your keyframes right and select the output folder to export your footage. Make sure that the character you've imported from Maximo is turned off in the render settings. If the shadows are too harsh for you, you can select your sun and change the angle right here. This will make the shadows softer. But I recommend using an HDRI for your lighting. Now to render the cloth, we will turn on the holdout option for the wings and turn it off for the cloth. And then render the cloth in a different uh, folder. If this video is helping you out, leave a like, comment and subscribe for more videos like this. And to remove the track markers from my back, I will use EBSynth. At first, I will export my video as PNG sequence and then I will import a single frame into Photoshop and remove the track markers using uh, the clone brush tool. Once I've done that, I will export it in a folder 
call it key one make sure you don't rename the photo name drag the folder where you have all of your frames into the video and drag the edited photo folder into the keyframes select the output folder and then click on synth once it is done this is how it will look while i'm at it i will also create a clean plate using photoshop when you record your video make sure that you record a single frame where you are not visible in the video so you won't have to create a clean plate from sketch now for the compositing open up after effects and import everything sometime after effects messes up the keyframes so make sure that the keyframes are right if they are not right click on your footage interpret footage and main and change the keyframes to 60 right there i placed the original video first and on top of that i placed the footage where the trackers are removed and then place the wings and the cloth onto your footage as well now if your cloth is not matching with your footage just like this add a level effect turn up the brightness and then add a color balance you can mess with the colors to match it better with your original footage just like this in the compositing you can spend as much time as you want this will depend on you when i first originally made this video i spent a whole day on compositing and now i've done it in like 10 minutes to get better at visual effects you'll need to be patient now we will have to create two masks one for the top and one for the bottom but before that what i will do is import in my roto layer add a level effects on it and turn it to full white to create a mat pre-composite and then using the track mat option in after effects i will add a mat to the cloth and then i will use a mask and feather it out a bit now go to the start of the cloth footage and animate the opacity so that it appears gradually now select your original footage create a new adjustment layer above it and add a tint effect to it change this to a darker red mask it under the cloth in the original video i have made it look like skin and a little bit of blood and stuff like that now let's fix the wings select your wing add a levels effect to brighten it up a little bit and then add a color balance to add a little bit blue into it now duplicate your wings and remove the levels effects from it to make it darker and then create a mask in the middle and feather it out this will make it so the wings are darker in the middle and brighter on the outside now this will depend on your footage how much darker the wings should be and how everything's gonna look like you can add multiple layers to brighten them or darken them it depends on you the more layers you add the more realistic it will look now duplicate the wings layer and create a mat for it using the levels effect i will bring the wings mat above everything and i will also duplicate the roto mat layer and bring it up now i will select everything and pre-compose it now i will turn on the visibility for the roto layer mat and the wings mat and then pre-compose them to make them into a single mat and then use the track mat tool to create a mat for the footage now go to the final few frames where you will fly up select both the mat and the footage and turn on keyframes for position and move them up this is how you'll fly now bring in the clean plate and place it in position in the original video i created this skin effect in photoshop and then dragged it on to my footage using gpsin and then i count the cloth on top of that now if you have any questions do let me know in the comments down below and in the meantime if you want to learn how to create 3d hair in blender you can watch this video or maybe it's going to be right here